we have the Quran here, and how do we know that it came from the pro from not the Prophet Muhammad, but from God? We think about the physical capacity of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Was he capable of writing such a, a document? Now, some people have tried to prove that uh, he must have been able to read or write. They say, okay, he was a merchant. So if he was a merchant, he must have been able to he read had to or know write. Numbers. Had to know yes. numbers, at least some uh, little rudimentary arithmetic or something like this. Uh, but uh, that's a far cry from saying that he would be capable of composing a book. And now, there were some people in his time who were known uh, as composers, uh, composers of uh, elegant poetry and so on, but he was not uh, among them. Some have even compared the Book of Mormon with its immersive world and characters to popular fantasy novels such as J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. Yet, to put things in perspective, Tolkien was an English professor. In contrast, Joseph Smith was an uneducated farmer without any prior literary experience to speak of. For this reason, the Book of Mormon's complexity, consistency, and sophistication provide excellent evidence that it truly was translated by the gift and power of God, just as Joseph Smith repeatedly testified. Uh, so to think that he came from, you know, the back burner and suddenly he starts to proclaim a message which becomes uh, the, uh, it becomes a paradigm for the Arabic language because later on in the 8th century, a hundred years later, when gr m m Arab grammarians wanted to codify the Arabic uh, grammar, they used the Quran as a reference book. The Quran actually became a masterpiece in the Arabic language and it began to be cited as uh, examples of elegant uh, prose. Uh, so the, uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was not in that league being trained and uh, cultivated in producing such elegant prose. It's like saying if somebody wants to get into politics today, they might start at the school trustee level and then they, you know, go on to uh, being a local uh, a a MPP, then uh, an MP and so on. Eventually one would try to become prime minister of the country. But, you know, to suddenly rise to the top from, from nowhere, this is unusual. And that was Donald Trump, the 45th president of the United States. The uh, first person to become president of the United States without having held previous elected office since Dwight Eisenhower, and he did it without the advantage of having won World War II. Yeah. The rhetoric has been, was basically about as good as we've heard from him and as you could deliver. Uh, so the, uh, this is an indication that the Quran is not a composition of the Prophet's own mind, but it is a revelation given to him from the Almighty God uh, in, in a level of eloquence that seems to have been beyond the Prophet, peace be upon him. And that comes together with a challenge to produce a book like this one. And uh, nowadays uh, there, there are deep studies being done on the Quran, for example, by Raymond Farron. Well, what is most um, particular about Raymond Farron's uh, um, input here is uh, the idea of ring composition. Similarly, uh, you do find something called uh, ring composition or concentric patterns in classical Arabic poetry. You find these similar patterns in stories, in poem literature, uh, and it's definitely you find them in Arabic literature. What's uh, differentiates the Quran is the amazing interconnection, the way it's so much more densely interconnected. This is a, a simple example of, of the same pattern, ring composition or concentrism in a, in a pre-Islamic poem. Pre that you have these same literary or symmetrical patterns occurring in the Quran, <coughs> I believe, but of course in much more complicated or dense or interconnected ways. But I think in general, the, the basic patterns, you can find similar patterns in, in pre-Islamic <coughs> poetry and then in after, later poetry as well, but not with this not to the same complexity. All of this indicates is that uh, the uh, Quran uh, is uh, it's hard to credit to the Prophet, peace be upon him, knowing his circumstances, knowing his, uh, uh, his uh, inability to read uh, and write. And in fact, mm -hmm. I need to elaborate on that because the Quran refers to him as an abil ummi. And that could have a variety of meanings, but the most uh, laudable uh, meaning seems to be that the Prophet, peace be upon him, was not trained to read or write. So for him to have produced the Quran, which became a masterpiece in the Arabic language, uh, this is too much. Mm -hmm. Muslims believe that Allah spoke his words directly through Gabriel to Muhammad, who then revealed it to his followers. But in reality, it went through a huge and questionable process. During Muhammad's entire lifetime, there was no book called the Quran. 
Only when Muhammad died did his followers come together and decided to compile all the Quran verses and turn it into one book. There were hundreds of people who memorized parts of the Quran and dozens of people who wrote down Quran verses on the first caliph Abu Bakr's rule and that Umar, who would later become the second caliph, urged Abu Bakr to compile the Quran. Abu Bakr then gave a man called Zayd ibn Thabid, who was Muhammad's scribe, the mission to compile all verses that were scattered among scribes. Muhammad never explicitly stated the idea to compile all the Quran verses into one book. Is there anything in the Quran the Prophet Muhammad couldn't possibly have known? Uh, there, there are bits of historical information which have turned out uh, on closer examination in modern times to uh, be accurate. And, and there are pieces of history which were not known to the Prophet, peace be upon him, or to his contemporaries in his uh, environment. Uh, for example, the drowning of the Pharaoh is mentioned in both the Bible and the Quran. And in the Bible, we get the impression that the, the Pharaoh just drowned in, in the Red Sea, and that was the end of him. But the Quran, in the 10th chapter, in the 92nd verse, says, uh, today we save you in terms of your body so that you uh, will be a sign for those who come later. That's God addressing the, the Pharaoh. And uh, indeed, as Dr. Bouquet has pointed out, the body of the Pharaoh has been discovered in, in 1898. Dr. Bouquet had a chance to examine that body and found that uh, this, uh, whoever this is, must have died either due to shock uh, or, or due to drowning. And um, in, 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 if it's shock, then it could be shock just prior to the drowning. Mm -hmm. so, so he has become a sign for those who come later. And, and the Quran spoke about this apparently in uh, way in advance. Morris Bukal's claim that the defect on the skull of Pharaoh Merneptah is evidence of his cause of death being drowning is a major speculation. Major skull fractures are by no means specific, nor are they common or an expected sign for any drowning incident. Furthermore, these conclusions have been rejected by Egyptologists, scientists, and archaeologists. A New York Times article ridicules Bukhail for not providing any evidence for how a surge of water produced a massive cranial trauma. Actually, Merneptah's tomb was robbed by treasure hunters about 3,000 years ago, and the injuries obtained by the corpse are likely post-mortem. This website from the Egyptian Museum mentions that the mummy was seriously damaged from robbery and the body had a hole from trauma inflicted after death. This new scientist article points at the current research on Pharaoh Merneptah's mummy. Scientists have concluded that he likely died from old age and atherosclerosis, disease of plaques in the arteries. The Qur'an's claim that the body of the Pharaoh was preserved holds little value anyway because the Qur'an does not even name the Pharaoh or offer any specific identifiers. Ramses II or Merneptah have no signs of them dying from drowning based on modern forensic standards. The preservation and mummification of bodies was the norm in Egypt. It was not unusual and it certainly cannot be called a miracle. Can you mention any scientific phenomenon that are mentioned or natural, sort of natural things that we couldn't possibly have known at the Prophet's time? The Quran uses language and expression uh, uh, which uh, w would, would be of interest to modern scientists and, and many are, are finding that uh, these expressions show that uh, whoever put, it, uh, put the matter this way um, apparently knows some of the things which we are now discovering. So who could that be? And the conclusion naturally is that this is God. For example, in the 51st chapter of the Quran, the 47th verse, the Quran says, as for the heavens, we have created it with power and we are expanding it. So what was meant by expanding it? The early commentators of the Quran could not understand this and they said, well, it must mean that God is putting more and more provisions in the universe. But, but, but expanding is not, it doesn't mean that it's expanding because you're putting more provisions. Well, what is now known is that the universe is expanding and the expansion of the universe uh, as a modern uh, fact came to be known only when Ho Edwin Hubble looked through his telescope in the 1920s. Uh, and, but the Quran already said this some 1400 years ago. It's only recently that people have started to translate the Arabic word la musiauna to mean an ongoing process of expansion. Both Pickthall and Yusuf Ali, for example, translate this word to mean that the heavens have been made a vast expanse. The Quranic commentator Ibn Kathir states that this verse means we made it vast. Note that this is a past tense and does not mention any ongoing process. The Lane lexicon 
describes this Arabic word to mean ample, abundant, wide, broad, spacious or roomy, and not growing or expanding. This verse has a much more simple meaning, that Allah made the heavens really, really big. One could make the same observation simply by standing outside on a clear night, looking up at the sky and saying, ooh, isn't that big? So you just don't jump to the conclusion, look, it only could have been God which could have been the author of that. <laughs>